Good afternoon, whatever time of day, good evening, that you are joining us. We're going to have a brief Sunday School lesson this morning about love. And there are a lot of different ways of thinking about love. Now, sometimes we'll say, oh, I love pizza. Do we really love pizza or do we like it a lot? Right, because pizza can't love us back, right? We love people, animals, and some people think animals can't love you back, but I would certainly defend my belief that they do. They love the hand that feeds them, at least. <laughs> so there are a lot of different references to love in the Bible. And one of the first ones that we see um, is in Leviticus, and it's part of the Ten Commandments. And Jeanette is going to read that verse for us that talks about that. Do not take revenge on others or continue to hate them, but love your neighbors as you love yourself. I am the Lord. Okay, so we're supposed to love our neighbors. So... This is us. And our neighbors should love us back, right? Okay. So, we're going to put our neighbors in here. So, if you pick out the, all of the larger balls, and we're going to put as many in there as we can fit. Is it full? Mm, that's not the same size, is it? Okay. So, would we look at this and say that it was full? Yeah. Okay, so this is all the love we have to give. And we're going to give it all to our neighbors. And God is going to love our neighbors too. God's going to love all of the neighbors that we put in here. So, now, we also have some other people in our life that we love. Can you think of other people in your life that you would love other than your neighbors? Your parents. Good. Yes, your parents. Your friends, your parents, your, parents. Um, your brother or sister, right? Pets. Mm-hmm. So, do we have any room for them in here? No. no. Well, let's take a look at these. Now, if we move things around a little bit, these are our parents and our brothers and sisters, okay? So, if we just make a little bit of space, we can make room for other than our neighbors. Sisters, do you want to read us from the Psalms, the verse that's there, Jensen? Sure. I know that your love will last. I know that your love will last for all time, and that your faithfulness is as permanent as the sky. And do we think about that when we think of our parents and our siblings, that that they will always love us, and we will always love them? Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's put, I'm going to put a few animals in here, cats and dogs. These are going to be these guys. more in there. Jensen, will you grab a couple out of there? Okay. So now we've got lots of different people and animals that love us. Now, what else 
Who else do we love? Anybody else? Do you have other family mm -hmm. that you? Your aunt, yeah. uncle, yeah. cousin. Yeah. So we're going to make room for those people. We all have some other relatives that we love and that love us, right? Mm -hmm. So, what do we have left? Is there any space left there? Not really. Not really. Doesn't look like it, does it? Let me show you. This is God's love. This is God's love for our neighbors and our friends, and our animals, and our parents, our siblings, siblings, our aunts and uncles, grannies and grandpas. And God loves all of them. And we love all of these people here and hold them in our heart, right? But no matter how many people we have in our life, we always have room to love God. And God will always love us. So you can see, he just, he just pours the love on. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a passage I want to read to you. This passage is from Corinthians. And it's a passage that um, sometimes people have read at weddings because they like it. And it's in chapter 13, starting with the first verse. Love is indispensable, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. All I'm doing is making noise if I talk, but I don't have love to go along with it. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not love, I am nothing. So you can be the smartest people in the world and understand everything, but you still have to have love to go along with it. That's what makes you a well-rounded person. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. So you can, sometimes people like to kind of show off a little bit. And they'll say, oh, I did this and I, I did this for these people and I did that for those people. But if they're only doing it so people will watch them, and say, oh, what a good job you did, then if there's no love in it, then it's not really a gift to God. You have to have love in the things that you do. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. Do you know what self-seeking means? Love attention. Yes. Good job, Jensen. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Do we do that sometimes? Do we kind of hold a grudge against people who do something to us that we don't like and say, I'm never going to be their friend because they hurt my feelings? You never do that? I have never said that. You never have? I'm so proud of you. Well, you haven't lived 70 years. 
When you've lived 70 years, I bet at some point you're going to have done that, to hold a grudge against someone for something that they did or said. Well, maybe. maybe, yeah. But we shouldn't do that. I'm not. You know, well, and we have love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. So if you think about mom and dad, you know that they will always protect you, right? They're going to be truthful with you. They're going to hope for things for you when you get older, or even now, hope for things that will be good for you. And God does that too. And one of the most important verses in the Bible, I think, is <clears throat> God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Who is God's son? Jesus. Jesus. And it's almost time for us to celebrate his birth when he first came to the earth, isn't it? Christmas is coming right around the corner. So we know that God loved us enough that he sent his very own son to take on our sins so that we could be saved. And all we have to do is accept that. And that makes us saved and we will be able to go to heaven because we believe that God sent his son for us and that Jesus is our savior. Can we have a little prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son for us. We don't deserve him. There isn't anything we could do to deserve that gift to us, but you give it to us willingly. You love us unconditionally, and we thank you for all of the blessings that we have in our life. Please help us to be the people that you want us to be. Amen. Thank you so much for helping me.